Hey guys, James here. Uh, just wanted to go over the new advanced uh, menu in the 180 CFX for you guys. I know a lot of you guys have been asking about it. Um, so, finally got some time to knock it out for you guys. Um, we're going to be dumping out the manual uh, for it here, hopefully soon. Um, so, let's get started here. Uh, big one right now is uh, doing the servo centering. So, what you're going to do is you're going to go to the outsides here and push the bind button on a DX9. So what this is, is this is AUX2, um, is what is driving uh, the basically commands, as well as AUX2 being triggered. It's getting us into these menus. Um, AUX2 does need to be reversed. Um, so on the DX7S, DX8, that kind of thing, you'll just need to reverse it. One thing to note, um, DX9 will have the telemetry options. Um, available to you. The DX7S, the DX8 um, will not unfortunately. Um, so it's only basically on the newer radio protocol. Um, so it has the basically the newer telemetry built in. Um, so basically now we are in the servo centering um, and you will just cycle through the servos using aileron here. Um, and that will go basically back to servo centering. So we'll cycle through and you can adjust via the elevator the servos. So if you need to center them, you can do it that way. You have very fine adjustments, so if you need to have more than that, um, you'll need to either go to a different spline on the servo arm, um, and then you just got to get those close. So one thing to remember is servo your center, uh, center your servos, and then level the swash plate. Um, you don't want to level the swash plate and then go back and center your servos. So. You know, do the servo arms, then do the links to get the swash plate level. Now, after we've adjusted the centering for all three servos, simply hold down the bind button, or on another radio such as the DX7, you would flip, you know, you would assign AUX2 to a switch and flip it back to the other position. Just hold it down, and now you're exited out of the programming menu. So that's how you do servo centering. <clears throat> Uh, next, we will do the gyro gain features. Um, so channel 5 does the tail gain, obviously. Um, so there's no need to adjust uh, tail gain inside these menus. Um, just use channel 5. It scales them all accordingly. It's a much better option. Um, this, you know, this is more for advanced features for cyclic and that kind of thing. Um, so to do that, <clears throat> we will go add all the sticks down and to the right and push the button. Go back to center. So one thing to note here is we're going to scroll on the DX9 over to this telemetry menu. And you'll see here we're on F4401 and H1. And all the values here are 100. So this is how it would come out of the box. It's all default. Um, number one here is cyclic P gain. B is cyclic I gain. L is cyclic D gain. And R is basically cyclic um, uh, responsiveness. So if you want it more responsive around center, um, that kind of thing, you would up D. Or up R, sorry. Um, so we'll go back to that. So if you don't have a DX9 and you don't have this option, you can simply look at the swash plate here. And it will move accordingly to whichever menu you're on. So I'm going to use aileron to adjust to the different menus. So if I go over here, now I'm on menu 2, the swash comes up closer to level, and now it's level on menu 3. So and then if I go one more, it goes to the right. So if you don't have a DX9, um, you can still use these advanced features, you just have to basically count your menus through. Um, so we're going to adjust the cyclic responsiveness. I highly recommend not adjusting the cyclic gains. Um, if you do, adjust them very slowly, you know, maybe 5% at a time. Um, they can definitely, you can definitely make the model fly very weird and get into some oscillations. Um, so do a very little at a time. Um, so be careful when doing that. Now that we're in the cyclic responsiveness, simply use elevator and you can increase it. And you'll see also the swash plays moving forward. 
So down elevator here increases the um, value here. And if I want to go all the way down, I can use back elevator. So now I'm at zero. So if you ever wanted to go back to default without sitting there holding it, simply use any rudder value and it will reset it to the default value. Um, so let's, for instance, I'm going to turn this up to 200. Oops, sorry, went one too many. I'm going to turn this up to 200. <clears throat> this will make it a little bit more responsive around center. Um, and I think, you know, for the guys that are wanting a quicker response, you can up this. I leave this actually at 100 and just run 125% dual rates. <clears throat> so um, you can use a combination to achieve, you know, your liking. After you're done adjusting these values, simply hold the button and we are back to normal flight control. The advanced feature menu right now is only for seven channel radios and up. Uh, we will have a new firmware uh, out here hopefully soon uh, that will allow the DX6 and the DX6i users to have all these features uh, available to them. Um, one thing you will have to do is have to use the Spectrum USB updater. Uh, update cable. Uh, that's SPMA 3065. Um, so um, all the open stock receivers, uh, the 6335, 636, all come with those cables um, as well as the being available separately. The other thing is the AS3X app from Spectrum does not work on this uh, uh, firmware. Um, right now it's currently for airplanes only and uh, just wanted to give you guys an update and let you guys all know that information.